All right, I want to welcome everybody to uh, the first class of the Discord server. I'm going to be covering um, how to build custom quotes and scanners using ThinkScript. So what we're going to be covering today is like how to build something like this and what it does and basically just the uh, the basics of ThinkScript. And it's, it's I'm not a scripter. I don't code. Um, it, this was all very foreign to me. I literally learned this like two days ago. Um, so this is going to be... A very rudimentary, just the basics to get started uh, and messing around with it. This isn't going to be any advanced stuff. I won't be talking over your head or, um, you know, a lot of times whenever you learn something from somebody that's really good at something, they just, when they start speaking, they're just, everything they say is just going over your head because you have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, so you, hopefully there won't be any of that in this video. Um, that's actually called expertise uh, syndrome or, or, yeah, I think that's what it's called. But I'm going to let uh, the room fill up real quick, let some people join, um, and we will get started. Now, for those, uh, let me turn on my, uh, for those in the Discord chat, let me turn on my, Turn off push to talk and it'll just be voice activated and let me know if you guys would rather have that. Can you guys hear me all right in the Discord chat? There's going to be an echo, so if you're listening in the Discord, I guess just mute the uh, main video and we'll talk on the Discord because the Discord will have no lag, so you guys will be able to... Uh... Well, actually, the Discord chat will have lag, so... Actually, I'm gonna I'll turn off my uh, voice chat in Discord. There. So, you guys can ask questions and uh, I'll answer them here. But uh, let's use the Discord chat as the main chat instead of uh, the YouTube live chat because I want I want the people in the Discord server to have first come first serve on uh, asking questions and helping them out, and then I'll get to any of the people that are on the live stream that might not be uh, in the Discord later. Okay, so real quick, let me get a gauge of who, um, how much experience do you guys have as for scripting or uh, ever work with ThinkScript? So if you if you have no experience at all, put in a zero. If you have a little bit of experience, put in like one. And that could be with like other languages or something. Um, if you if you have a feel for like basic scripting, uh, put in a two. And then, you know, if you're at moderate to advanced, you know, three, four, or five. All, all chat is uh, in resource pit. And if you guys want to ask questions, actually, I probably, do you guys have uh, access on permissions? Hold on. Yeah, you guys should be able to uh, speak. So if you guys want to speak on voice chat, feel free to ask me any questions because it's, you know, it's always nice to have somebody to talk to that wants to. Uh, learn something instead of just texting. Okay, so Lou Python. I messed. I did mess with Python a little bit um, way back in the day when I was doing microcontroller programming and ba basically building uh, my own 3D printer. That's all Python. Okay, so let's get started. I'll, I'll run you through my, if you didn't watch the video I posted yesterday, last night, which was really, actually 20 minutes long, I didn't want it to be that long. I'm going to run through these quotes real quick and explain to you what they are. So we'll, we'll, we'll build some of these uh, today and I'll show you how I built them uh, and I'll explain the basics of them. So the first one we have here is, actually let me zoom in my let me zoom in my video a bit so you guys can see it better. It's kind of hard to... Uh... 
try to fit everything in here correctly. That way you guys can see what I'm working with a little bit better. All right, is is anybody having issues seeing the columns over here on my uh, my scanners? Can you guys all see the numbers? Is the quality good to where you can tell what everything's saying? Or do I need to zoom in more? Hi Trent, how are you, uh, how are you liking Lord Clarem Prophet? I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more and hopefully I'll have to keep an eye on my uh, screen. Is there anybody that's having trouble seeing the screen? I'll get to that eventually, Copac. Um, right now I'm crazy busy uh, trying to build my strategies and uh, set up my Discord server and build all these things scripts. I've just I've got so much going on that I haven't had time to make dedicated videos. Okay, so the first one right here is a gap scanner uh, or a uh, gap column, and this basically just tells you the gap of the pre-market from uh, yesterday to today. So if we go to XLRXR, this is a 21% gap up. If you click the close to the open using the drawing tool, it's about uh, somewhere around there. 26%, so we go to, uh, see if I can zoom in. So click down here, the open, 27%. So that's not actually calculating entirely correctly. Uh, Oh, I know why. Probably because it's calculating off the close of today. Maybe. So down here to here, 9%, 8. Point, it seems to be off by like 1%. So we'll have to, I'll have to debug that. Um, but the next one is percent change from open. So this is a calculation of how much the stock has changed since the opening bell. <clears throat> then I have a dollar change from open. This is the exact same thing, but it... Uh, tells you the dollar amount that it's, it's changed. I don't really use this column a whole lot. It's just a, kind of a bonus to have there if you want to use it. Um, but one of the nice things about the percent change from open is it actually also scans for red green moves, which is a very, uh, it's a price action signal that is pretty good for telling you that the stock is going to go bullish for the day. And when a stock goes red to green, such as XXLR, the uh, box will turn green. Um, so if you, if we zoom in here, you can see on the opening bell, it opened, went red, came back up and went green. And that's the box will flip green when that happens. So that's uh, just a little signal you, you get with this column to, uh, have a price action signal for a bullish movement. Uh, on top of that, it will also flash orange right at, uh, within plus or minus 2% of the open. So it, it will flash orange first before it goes green so that you can see it. You'll, you'll be notified that it's going green or it's about to go green so you can catch it before it actually goes uh, green. So that way you can see red to green moves before they actually happen. So that's a nice little bonus of uh, this column. Now next up we have uh, volume, volume to average volume ratio. This is a really nice uh, custom column to filter the most popular stocks of the day. So what the, the watch list I'm using right now is just gap up. So it's uh, just the, the regular um, thinkorswim gap up scanner. It's everybody can use this. If you have thinkorswim, you just click on gap up. But this is a calculation of the average volume of the past 30 days and today's volume. And it's, so if we go down, let me scroll down here to the one-to-ones. So let's click on LYB. You can see here, uh, daily average volume of the past 30 days is 2 million. Today's volume is 2.15 million. So this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So this you can look at this as a ratio of how much, how much has been traded today based on the past 30-day uh, average. 
So these down here traded uh, like 50% uh, of their average. Um, the daily average is 2.1, it traded 1 million a day. So it's only 50% of the average. So you look at this as a percentage. Now, if we get up here, you know, 1.2%, then we get into 2.5%. Uh, at at 2.5%, the colors change to blue, and it indicates that these are trading uh, very heavily more volume than the, the average of the past 30 days. So news came out with these stocks, something made them move a lot. Uh, they're the most popular stocks in the day. And then you get into the above 10, 10 times the average daily volume, it turns uh, purple or violet. And these are like the crazy news stocks. These are the extremely popular. They've ripped up a ton today for whatever reason. Um, now, if you think about this on the pre-market or on the, the opening bell, this will look totally different. Um, you can still sort you can sort your uh, watch list on this and find the most popular stocks in the day. So when, if you're a penny stock trader or a low cap trader uh, or a low float trader, you want to be trading whatever stock is the most popular because that's the one that has the most potential to run. The problem is the nap, the default um, columns for thinkorswim on your watch list, they're pretty shitty. They're not very good to find uh, those popular stocks. So this column helps you out tremendously when finding these stocks. You can, on the opening bell, you can sort by average or volume, average volume, and you'll instantly see what is the most popular stock uh, right now. And uh, that's a really awesome column to have. Um, why George are you in the you're in the discord if you if you have any questions uh, anybody that's in the discord ask them on uh, the discord instead of the live chat <sighs> so the next one is uh, just a basic volume I've reduced the volume down so this is the exact same as uh, volume however it is reduced by 1 million so you times each one of these by 1 million so this is 48 million 31 million 15 million, 9 million, 5 million, 2 million, so on and so forth. So this, all this column does is uh, save you screen space so that it doesn't look like the shares here. And I'm trying to figure out how to uh, reference, how to create a custom shares column so that I can reduce down all those millions of numbers because I don't need to know like 760. I don't need to know the 47,000. Like that's redundant to me. All I want to know is uh, like the 14 million or the five billion, like that's it. That's all I want. Um, and actually, <clears throat> while we're talking about it, uh, <clears throat> if you want to learn ThinkScript on your own, like after this video, support chat. Uh, let me, let me, up in the, you can't see it right now, but up in the top uh, right corner of Thinkorswim, there's uh, the support chat button. You click that and then go to chat rooms, ThinkScript Lounge, and then this will open up. Um, the ThinkScript Lounge, and you can come on here and talk and ask questions, and they have people that will help you out um, if you guys can see it. So you can ask questions on here, and they will uh, help you uh, work through your problems or debugging and stuff. So that's a really good feature uh, to have. Okay, back to the last. Uh, so these last three columns, though, this is these are my most favorite columns that I've made, and they're really nice to have. So. This is basically a color-coded uh, last price. So it's the exact same as last, except that they're color-coded. And I've, code, I've coded them to be uh, purple from $1 to $10. And then I think below a dollar is another color, but I can't remember what it is. 10 to $25 is light blue. Uh, 25 to 50 is green. And then light green to 100. Uh, orange to 200. And then... 200 to 400 is light red, and then above 400 is uh, dark red. Now, that doesn't mean a whole lot uh, until I show you these other two columns because the colors work in conjunction with these other columns. So the next column here is the daily range of the price of the stock uh, by price. So this, this is how much the stock has moved uh, in the day. High, it's a calculation of high and low of the day. Uh, and how much the stock has moved. This column is really good to find stocks that are moving a, a lot. Um, if you're if you're a short trader 
and you want to play the highest running stock of the day and short it or uh, play any kind of short trade, you need to have a good opening range. Like you need to have a stock that has moved at least 50 cents or a dollar or two dollars. You know, the more it moves up, the more it's going to move down. So you're as a short trader, your potential for profit increases as a stock is ripping up. And this column helps you find those. So it's color coded just like the other, the volume one and the last. Uh, $10 and up is purple. Ten, uh, $5 to $10 is light blue. $5 to $2.5 is green. $2.5 to $1 is light green. And then you have yellow down to 50 cents, or no, down to 65 cents. And then 65 cents to 35 cents is orange. And then 35 cents to 15 cents is pink. And then below that is red. So, you know, the reds you don't want to trade. Pinks are better. Oranges are even better. Yellows is better than that. Green and so on and so forth. Now, you can combine the last and uh, the dollar range together to find really good stocks. So, let's, let's say... Let's say we were a short trader and we wanted to trade something with a lot of profit uh, on the rebound. So you want the highest dollar here. We could sort by dollar range. And then you look over at last and you want, you want the brightest color you can be. So this here is a $48 stock. It moved $8. Just, on, just at looking at those two numbers, you know that this stock has moved a lot. So if we click on XXLR, this is a... A, a very big uh, bullish stock, and you can short trade this as it's moving up. You could you could use these columns to find it, and then once it hits its high, you can play the short if you want. Um, now, so basically, the way you use these two columns is you look for you sort by one or the other, and then you look for the the if you're looking at the last, you want to find the the Cheapest stock there is with the most movement. So here we have a $10 stock that moved $2. This is another very good stock. Uh, now it actually, if you look at the gap up, it was a 52% gap up. Whenever stocks gap up that much, usually it's going to be a uh, short for the day because it's it's already overextended so much from the gap up. And it has a pretty terrible pre-market uh, chart as is. So, or you can on the flip side, sort by last. Let's say, Let's say you have a small account. You're, uh, you know, you're not trading with leverage. Maybe you just trade with U Stock Trade or Robinhood or something. So you can only trade those real low cap stocks. You can trade. You can sort by last and then immediately look at the dollar range and see which one is moving the most in the on the opening bell. So here's a two dollar stock that moves seventy five cents. That's that's a huge move. Um, and we see here this this trade. If you got in on the open just from here. That's 42% gain uh, just on that, that one stock. And you can quickly find it with these columns. Uh, yeah, I can post the Discord real quick. Um, So those, there's the Discord link. You're going to have to read through some stuff to get into the channel and be able to talk. Uh, new joins can't speak, so you got to read through the information to do that. Uh, on Shrata, NA on change, I don't see NA on Oh, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I noticed that when I was building this, but uh, we'll figure that out later. Then, so that's how that works. So if you're if you got a low dollar account and you're not trading with leverage, you can use this on the flip side to find the lowest moving stocks or the cheapest stocks. Or you maybe maybe you want to trade uh, mid cap, mid float stocks, uh, $10 to $20. You can then sort this way and do it that way. Then all you have to do is look at the uh, shares for the float and so on and so forth. So, um, or you can, if you are a, maybe, you, maybe you've got a huge account and you're making a, you have a lot of money to trade with. So you need those higher cap stocks that maybe move less. Maybe you're a momentum trader or you want less volatility. So you can trade, you know, the hundred dollar stocks or the, uh, 
$50 stocks and then immediately look over to see which ones are moving the best. So these bright greens are going to be higher than the light greens. So this this stock right here, $94 and $64, is uh, a good also a way to uh, find good trades. Now, on top of that, we have the third column here, which is probably the coolest one. This, I'll explain what it does in a second, or I'll explain how it works in a second, but what this uh, column tells you is, is a stock breaking out? Is it making new highs? Is it about to make new highs? Is it about to make new lows? Is it about to make, uh, is it making new lows? Or is it consolidating? Um, or is it bouncing off of a uh, 50 fib? Now, I haven't programmed the, the fibs yet, but eventually colors will pop up when a stock is getting close to the 61 fib or the 50 fib or the uh, what, what is it, 39 fib. Is that the other one? Um, those are the most popular. You have the 38 fib. So the 61 fib and the 50 fib are usually the most popular. So this column right here is going to be an amazing column when I get it done. Uh, yeah, NA, NAN is not a number. So this column tells you a tremendous amount of information. So let me sort it real quick, and you'll you'll see that it's color coded just like the other ones. Um, and this is a percent calculation of the current price. It's it's the current price opening low. It's just it's just like the dollar range. It calculates the dollar range uh, the exact same way, but then it tells you where the current price is at based on that range. So it's a percentage calculation of is the stock making new highs, is it coming down, uh, so on and so forth. So if I click here, and this is a 99%, this basic 99%, 100% basically means the stock is making new highs. It is at its top range for the day. And when it's when it's doing that, it will flash uh, pink. And when it's within 10%, it will it will be uh, dark pink. So you get a notification before the stock hits uh, that that 100% uh, mark. You get you get basically a 8% um, buffer to find it and start watching it before it actually starts making new highs. So and then you can also then from 90 to 75 is light green 75 to 50 is uh, light green and then orange down to 25 and or no down to 30 and then 30 to 20 is pink and then below that is uh, red down to 10% and then from 10% to 2% is dark uh, the box is dark red and then uh, bright red at zero so these stocks are making new lows these these uh, and you can use this intraday while you're trading to find stocks that are making new lows or new highs or you can use it to find out how, where the stock finished for the end of the day so if you're doing aftermarket analysis if you're doing your homework and trying to find trades or picks to trade you can use this to find stocks that are really that finished weak or finished strong so all these stocks uh, uh, is jigsaw in here yeah Jigsaw, which study is the one that tells you the day's range, the day's high and low? Which one is that that you sent me? Let me turn off this one. This is uh, yesterday's open and close. Jigsaw, pivot projection, uh, Macy, which one is that? Is that? No, it's not that one. Range. Glad you enjoy it, Rob. Uh, what is that study? There's a study I have that tells me. Uh, Oh, that's not it. Okay, well, whatever. <sighs> okay, so let's let's look at this real quick. So this stock is let's click on this one, ten percent. So 
this stock had a two dollar movement in the day it's a hundred dollars but it finished at ten percent of its daily range so if we click here this is the low of the day this is the high of the day stock finished from the low at ten percent and well it's, it's not going to calculate that way because that's the overall stock price but this is t this is basically closed 10% of the total range of the day. Now, if we scroll up and look at, uh, say, EEQ, it finished at 98% of its range. So it's pretty much making new highs as it closed. Um, if you're a swing trader, this indicator can be really good for quickly judging whether a stock is finishing strong or maybe it's breaking down and it's uh, become weak and maybe you want to downsize your position or reduce your risk because it could potentially uh, you know, break down on the pre-market or the aftermarket hours. But you know, if you're swing trading something and it finishes at 98%, pretty good indication that it's probably going to continue to go uh, bullish for the, uh, the pre-market and aftermarket hours. So that's a quick explanation of all of these uh, quotes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to build some of them today, and we'll get through the, basic, uh, the basics of ThinkScript. And then also I'll show you how I built this scanner. Uh, and this scanner is designed to find, uh, well, I'll just throw it up and I'll show you what, what the charts look like. Test script, bump and run, charts. So let's sort by um, set closed. Now let's do dollar range. So CELG is, I traded CELG Friday and the CELG actually inspired me to make this scanner. But what this scanner does is it finds stocks that are between $7 right here and $100. And it has at least moved 25 cents since the open. So this right here, this is a calculation open plus 25 cents uh, and the high is greater than the open plus 25 cents so it, it will no stock it will not pop a stock on the scanner until it's at least moved 25 cents this goes back to you know uh, range trading or short trading if you want to trade something you need something that's moving that's that's the first prerequisite you need something that's moving uh, and this basically scans for something at least moving 25 cents so if you're a short trader you can at least make as soon as something pops on the scanner, you can at least make 12 cents uh, on a 50 cent fib pullback, uh, theoretically. That's there's a lot more to it than that. But uh, and on top of that, it also looks for um, stocks that have gapped up from yesterday's close at least 2% to 15%. You know, we want stocks that have gapped a little bit, but we don't want stocks that have gapped like 25, 50%, like that one that we looked at earlier that was 50% and it shorted for the rest of the day. So. I'll show you how I built this uh, as well. Post link, what do you guys need links for? So CLG is a, this is a pattern. The reason I, uh, built this scanner is because CLG is a pattern I see all the time in low float stocks. When I was in Deckmar Trades uh, community, I would see this pattern day in and day out on uh, low float, low cap stocks, you know, sub $10. It's a very, very straightforward pattern. It's also one of the patterns that uh, is um, Warrior Trading's go-to pattern. Um, the way it works, you have multiple legs and you can play each leg. So you have the, the first indication is a gap up pre-market. The second one is a big rip up. And then a, uh, this is a basically a flag right here. You, it's a the one minute, you can't really see it. Let's go back to two minutes. That's one day. So you have a flag pulling here and uh, Warrior Trader, his bread and butter trading, at least the, when I watched him, was this leg right here. He would watch for a big flag up and then wait for it to rip and move. And he would wait for the first pullback and he'd play this long up to here. That was his go-to uh, bread and butter trade. But you can play any of these legs uh, and, and you can play them different ways too. Uh, on top of that, 
then you have what's called a uh, double top. So you have a big, you have a stock that's ripped up, it's moved a lot. You you can play the pullback and then the next leg up uh, to the third leg. Typically, the third leg fails on these patterns. You you rarely ever see them rip past the third leg, but it can happen. Um, it, th usually, that only happens on lower float stocks, uh, stocks that can force a, sh a short squeeze. So you won't you won't see a third leg uh, finish strong usually if the floats above 50 million. Uh, this is a 700 million share float, so there's it's very very unlikely the third leg would uh, rip on this. So you you make the high, and then you have a cup and handle or a pullback, and then it tries to make a new high and it fails. When it fails, this is an easy short for the rest of the day, and you can see this. this. This is a pattern I see all the time, and that's why I built this scanner. And then by building that scanner, that led me to building all of these custom quotes so that I could better find this one pattern, because this, this is a very nice pattern to trade. Hey, Laura. Is there a way to eyeball? Is there a way to eyeball the likes, cost, and commissions for a trade to figure out how much of a move you need to make to make profit? Uh, that's a calculation that you have to do. Uh, it, it's something I do on the fly. So let's let's say this was pre-market and I was I had all these scanners and stuff set up and CLG popped. What I would look for is the dollar range that it's already moved. It's gap up and uh, the volume that it's traded. So if I saw this pre-market with all my scanners um, and it's already moved, it moved a total of $2.70. So this, let's fib this real quick. The low and the high. So the 50 fib right here is, that'd be a dollar 30 cents. No. Dollar yeah, dollar thirty-five. So when this if this popped on my scanner on the opening bell and it's already moved a dollar thirty cents on the first leg, that's that's a fantastic move. Like that's that's a, a easy way to calculate your profit to loss. So if it fails on the, the next leg, you could short it for a fifty fib bounce, and that would be uh what's the dollar thirty divided by two? 70 cents somewhere around there 70 cents profit so that's how you can calculate your profit to loss and your risk reward i've talked about that in some of my other videos or if this, if the second leg breaks up and you make new highs then you refib again for a 50 percent bounce and it i actually i shorted this heavy here and i sold out right on the 50 bounce uh here i think this is where i sold um so you can play these, you just refib it every single time, and that's your profit margin from the high to the 50 fib or the 60 fib. Typically, a lot of people will sell out half at the 61 fib or just above it, just, just in case it cup and handles and it comes back up, and then you lose all your profit. So you lock in half at the 61 and then uh, lock in the rest if it continues to be weak uh, at the 50 or you get out if it uh, reverses and cup and handles because sometimes it does cup and handle if the stock is really has a lot of uh, upward pressure. This is CELG, uh, Laura. Okay, so that's a quick explanation. That's enough talking about that. So let's get to actual scripting. All right, so let me, we're gonna get rid of, we'll, just, we'll clean up my charts real quick. Uh, just so there's less here to look at, less visually uh, going. And we are going to build the first thing, one we're going to build is the simplest one, the gaps gap fill or the uh, gap quote customize. Look, we'll look at the thing real quick. This is it. This is all the uh, script is very simple. Um, so it's open to close. Okay. So th the math is a little confusing on this. I always kind of screwed up, but we'll get through it. Custom quote. Actually, let me see. There might be a. Oh. All right. So we'll go. When you want to create a, a new custom quote, you just type in custom right here. <laughs> and uh, you'll have a list of custom uh, quotes that you can move. What you do is you click on the little 
scroll icon and it will bring up this screen. Uh, let me drag this over real quick. I guess I, I have to save it real quick. Uh, gap uh, class. So I'll, I'll save all these as gaps or as the class filter. It's already on there. So we'll drag this up to gap class. I hit OK. So this is our new column right here. <clears throat> and it's not calculating what we want. So custom, go back to it. Gap class. Let me move up my screen so you guys can see everything. Good. <clears throat> so the first thing you'll notice is it doesn't look like the script editor that I showed you earlier. To get the script editor, you go to Think Script, and this this is the coding part. However, the condition wizard is a really nice feature. If for a newbie who's you don't know anything about scripting, you can learn uh, the, some of the functions real easily by hitting Add Condition. So one of the simplest ones is like. Uh, let's say you want to do price, the close is greater than the close, let's go back to price, close of today, uh, and then offset by one bar. This is basically looking back in time, one bar, two bars, three bars. So we'll go to one bar, hit save, <clears throat> and if you go over to ThinkScript, you, you now have like code for that to work. So the close is greater than close from one bar ago. This is basically saying the close today is uh, greater than the close one bar ago. And the way you know what time frame it is, is right here, this little button here. You have uh, weeks, day, uh, four days, two days, one day, hours, minutes. So the default is always day. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to calculate a gap scanner, what you would look for is <clears throat> the current bar is open to yesterday's close. So all you would have to do to calculate that is the open of today's bar, so day one is open, is greater than the close of one bar ago yesterday. So it's looking at yesterday's close, if it's greater than open, uh, this will do a calculation. But we're not, we don't want that, so I'm just gonna close it out real quick. Reopen, go back to script, think script, delete. So now we're just going to actually build the uh, gap scanner. <laughs> the first thing you want to do is you need to be, you need the calculation to post to the column. Uh, there's a function that you have to use to do that, which is called plot. So we could type in plot x. Uh, and X can be anything. You can you can call this uh, <sighs> plot gap, plot the plot p. It doesn't really matter. This is just this is a variable. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, I always just use X. So X equals. We're going to take the open of today minus the close of yesterday. And the way you do uh, of one bar ago and the way you do one bar ago is uh, in parentheses in, in brackets one so this is calculating the, the the current bar is open minus the close one bar ago and the, the time frame you know is day here now uh, you can calculate uh, using different time frames so it, let's say you wanted to calculate of calculate the uh, from the one minute time frame, but you, you you want to take the open of the daily bar minus the close of the one minute bar for whatever reason, you can do that. There is a, a way to set that up. And my uh, the way you would search this is this website right here. This is the ThinkSwim. Uh, this is all of the, the variables and functions that you can use in ThinkScript, and I'll link it here. And then this is a learning center where you can like basically tutorials, um, and I'll link these in the live chat too. I'll show you how to color code, Matt. We'll get to color coding all the, all that. That was actually a little bit of a pain starting out, but I got it figured out. So that's that's the uh, these two links. But if you wanted to do uh, 
days time frame, you can uh, close, one minute close. So let's say you wanted to calculate the close of a different time frame. You would come here and you type in close, and this basically tells you the, the requirements to do that. So you can, the, whenever something is in parentheses here, basically that means uh, it has extra functions or extra options that you can tell it to do if you want them to do that. So the first one is get symbol. You can tell it to look at a specific uh, uh, ticker symbol, which I don't ever want to do for doing quotes. So I, I never use that one. And then you have period, the current period. This is uh, where it tells you, this is where you designate what time frame you want to use. And I actually haven't used this yet, but there is, uh, I think the way you would write this is basically bracket one minute parentheses. No, that's not correct. I'm not sure exactly how to do it, but that's that's how you can figure it out that way or you can ask in the uh, think script but we'll forget about that for now okay so plot x the open bar of today minus the close of yesterday if we hit apply right there we've done the calculation you can see that it updated <clears throat> and this is just a price calculation though it's it's a dollar amount calculation so if we go to celg and click it 1.7 if we do the open here 7834 pull up my calculator real quick 7834 close of yesterday 7661 minus 7661 1.73 so we're off by like two cents but that's probably because I didn't quite put the mouse on it currently. So this is a calculation of how much the stock has changed from the open to close of yesterday. Now, we want to turn it into a percent, though. So we need to do some calculations. And I'm actually just going to save the time to do this. So if we look at the old, we have uh, open minus the close, which is what we just wrote, divided by the open times 100. So ignore all this other stuff. It, this is this is all we're looking at right here. So we go back to our one. <laughs> Let's put open minus the close in parentheses. So this, when you put something in parentheses, it's basically, it's going to calculate, anybody that's gone through math class knows, the when you put something in the parentheses, it's going to calculate that in conjunction and then look at something else. So to make it a little easier, I'll do some spaces. Um, and then we're going to do open times 100. What was that? Divided by 1? I can't remember what it was. No, divided by open times 100. Is that right? Why? No. Divided by open times 100. Let's do divided by open times 100. Why is my syntax screwing up? Oh. Okay. So we'll parentheses that real quick. Delete that one. Okay. So our first calculation is open minus the close. So this gives us that dollar amount that we saw earlier, the one the $1 and 73 cents. Then it's going to take the open times 100 divided by that dollar amount. And I think that's an incorrect. That's why my gap scanner was uh, incorrect, actually. <laughs> so now we updated it. And you can see it's at 2.18, which is a little different than 2.2. So the reason the gap scanner reads 2.2 instead of 2.18 is because I don't care about that. 1% decimal like I don't want that I don't want it to take up my screen space and overload you know information so the way you can you can reduce that 2.18 to 2.2 is by using a new function called round and this is it just rounds the number to a decimal place so we do a parentheses round and then another parentheses um, now the round function if you go back to 
uh, if you go back to that window, we type in round. This, these are the uh, options, the parameters that you can use with round. So the dub, double number is uh, whatever you're rounding, and then int number of digits, that's just uh, what decimal place you want to round it to. So we need to fill this and then do a comma. You see the comma? The comma separates the, uh, the parameters from each other, and it tells it to round. So you have to put... Whatever you're trying to round, you have to put in parentheses, this parenthesis here and here. And then separate it with a comma. So we go back to here. Let me, let's see if I can kind of show you this a little bit better. So, okay, so we're trying to round this entire function right here. So we want we want this entire calculation to round to a certain digit. So we need to first put it in parentheses. So there's our parentheses right here. And if you want, if you click on the parentheses, it'll, they'll, they'll highlight like light uh, gray. And that basically shows you where, what parentheses that it's attached to. If we click on this parentheses, it goes to there. If I was to put uh, parentheses around this one, it would, these would highlight gray. So that's a little visual way to see, because it, when we get into color coding, there's going to be a lot of parentheses, and it's going to be a little bit hard to follow. But just know that little trick. You can see where the parentheses are at based on covering it. So this is the calculation that we want to round. Now we do the comma, and you can put whatever number you want here. This is basically like a, a decimal place. If I hit apply, it's now 2.2. .2. If I change it to 2, it's now going to round to... Uh, a decimal here I'll, I'll I'll just write it out real quick so if you type in one this is basically rounding to this decimal if you type in two it's rounding to the second decimal if you type in three it's rounding to the third decimal so on and so forth so when we when we build our volume calculator which is like you know, 1,760,230 uh, shares of tr volume traded, we're going to use a lot of, uh, we're going to use like five or six, which will round the, the decimals down. Now on the flip side, you can do a negative number. And this is the, the other side of the decimal equation. If you do negative one, it is X. Uh, it's the, the first digit. If you do negative two, it's X, X, it's rounding to the second digit. So when you're using big numbers instead of decimals, you use negative and so on and so forth, if that makes sense. Um, you just experiment with it. All, if you want to learn it, all you have to do is like change. If you type in zero, it's now going to round to uh, the zero. Uh, yeah, so it's going to get rid of that uh, one decimal. And then if I do negative one, it, it should round to zero. They should all be zero, or, well, ten. So, yeah. But we, what we want is two. I think. Is that right? No. We want one. And one. So now it's 2.2. .2. So the gap is 2.2. .2. And this, I use round purely to save space on uh, my screen so that it, I don't have a ton of numbers. And that's pretty much it. So that's the first calculation and actually I think that calculation is incorrect I need to redo the math on it because um, I don't think that gap is entirely accurate so the open and the close yeah I'll have to redo that calculation because that is not correct but we'll I don't want to just waste time on the live stream uh, since this I'm showing you guys new things now the last thing that you have to do when writing a function or writing like a calculation like this is you have to end it with the uh, um, what is this thing called again? I can't remember. Semicolon. You have to end it with a semicolon. Uh, the semicolon basically says that this calculation is done, and you move on to the new cap, a, a new function or a new calculation. So, the next thing we want to do is we want to color code it. We want it to uh, 
be a certain color if it's a positive number or a negative number. And it's that's super easy to do. Um, the first thing you type is the variable that you use, the variable you want to color. So in this case, we used X, um, but you can use anything like, let's make it simpler. Let's, since I made a Thor hammer, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll call our variables today. If you guys haven't seen it, that's a 15 pound aluminum Thor hammer. We'll call all our variables Thor hammer today. So plot Thor hammer. Thor hammer, uh, cut, type in now, uh, what is the color? Uh, if you forget what a function is, you a lot of times you can come over here and type in color and it will give you a list of all the things. Yeah, so assign, assign value color. So that's the function that we want. Go back to here, Thor hammer. We'll put a period, which designates the in like this is the this is the variable that we're trying to designate. Um, val. Why isn't it typing? Oh, assign. It's it's, it's a sign. Ass. So whenever you start typing, if you stop, uh, it will try to auto. Uh, fill whatever you're trying to type. So you just need to type the first few things and then go down to assign uh, value color. So now you're saying, I want to assign value color to Thor hammer. Uh, and the way you do that is in parentheses, just, just like the round function that we did earlier. If we go over to the assign value color, you see this parentheses and it says custom color. So you need to tell it what color you want in these parentheses. So we're going to create the parentheses and go backspace one. And then you just type in color. I, I type in like just type in COL. And then these are, these are all the colors that you can use. Um, we're going to use light green and then we end it with a semicolon done. So we've just assigned it a color. We hit apply. Now everything's light green and you can change this color to whatever. Let's do uh, cyan. Now it's bright blue. Now let me change my let me change my scanner back to the gap fill or the gap up. Now let's let's do a different watch list. We need one that has uh, red and let's see ETFs. No. Yeah. So. Here you see we have ETFs that are red, but we need to designate them red when they're negative. And here's how you do that. So we go back to the uh, script. Instead of designate color, we can do an if statement. So what we're gonna, what we're going to say is if if the price is above zero, we want it to be green. If it's below zero, we want it to be red. And there's a way you write that. So if Thor hammer, which is our calculation, is greater than zero, then color light green. Else color, uh, let's do pink. Because pink's a little less uh, visually impairing. So now, if Thor hammer is greater than one, it's going to be green. If it's less than one or less than zero, it's going to be red. You can apply. Boom. Thor That's what my variable is. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> and this if if statement, if then statement, is basically how I did all of the color coding on uh, those more advanced scanners on the end, which I'll sh uh, show later. Okay, so that's that's a quick introduction into uh, scanners now, or into ThinkScript. So the easiest way to learn ThinkScript is one using uh, this website, two using. No, let me hit it.
using the uh, Think, Think Script Lounge here. And then the third one is to download other scanners and um, basically copy them and reverse engineer them. Look at, look at their code and figure out how they're doing what they're doing. Uh, and that, that's the quickest way to learn because you're basically just tearing apart somebody else's code and figuring out what does what. And then you, you copy whatever things that you need from that code and put it into your code uh, and just go from there. And then when you run into a snag, ask on the help channel. Okay, so that's the gap scanner. Um, and also, I haven't said this, but I will, I'll be releasing all these scripts on the Discord server once I work out all the kinks and get them uh, running right. So you guys can use them or uh, tear them apart and build your own if you want and see how I did it. Um, so the next, let's let's build the let's build the average volume calculator, which is this one right here over on the end. Let's go back to uh, gap up. So we're going to build this one now, which is a calculation of the average volume. And I built this one actually by using uh, another code that I got from Jigsaw that he sent me this. So if you go into my, my studies uh, volume data, yeah, I think it's volume data. This is something that Jigsaw sent me. And this, this study is this right here. Um, these daily average bars and total volume. So what I wanted to do is put the daily average volume into my code on my quotes, but I couldn't quite figure out how to do it. So all I had to do was look at uh, this code that he get, sent me. And if we scroll down, it looks very confusing, but it's not. Enter, enter, enter. Uh, let's, let me organize this so it's a bit easier to see. So. It, it makes a bit more sense when you uh, clean up the syntax. This is basically taking the volume of yesterday, the, the volume of the day before, the day before that, the day before that, the day before that, all the way to 30 days. It's, it's adding all of those volumes, volumes together and then dividing by 30, which is the average. So th this code right here is how we calculate the average volume of the past 30 days. And since we're building an average volume quote, all you do is copy this, close, we go back over to our quotes. We're, we'll, we'll delete this and build a new one. So this is now going to be a volume average class. And we post this. So now everything's red. The reason it's red is because this is just a calculation. We actually we haven't told it to do anything. It's not we're not we haven't plotted it. We haven't um, defined it or anything like that. So there's a few ways. There's a few things we can do. If we wanted to post it out to the quote, we could do another plot. So plot for hammer equals. And then now it's not red, so the syntax is correct. So now we're plotting it. We hit apply, uh, hit OK. If I scroll over, this now we have the average volume of the past 30 days being posted out onto our quote. But that's not what we want. And so the way <clears throat> the way we change this or the way we fix this is uh, instead of posting it out to our screen we're going to create our own uh, variable. So let me enter this. Instead of doing a plot, we're going to do what's called a define, DEF. And this, a define, we're basically defining a variable. And we're telling it that Thor hammer equals this. So when you're writing, when you're writing a complicated code and you need to reference something multiple times um, like let's say we needed to we needed to use the average volume in this code multiple times throughout the calculations well you don't want to copy and paste you don't want to uh, 
you know, every time you need the average volume, you don't want to do this calculation, you know, every time and just keep pasting it and pasting it and pasting it. That's just, that's a nightmare of code and you'll never be able to read through it and fix it. So instead, you just define uh, a Thor hammer, uh, a variable, which is what we did here. So Thor hammer equals all of this calculated. So Thor hammer is now the average volume. Another example is uh, like that gap scanner. We could do define uh, close. No, define gap equals um, open minus close of one one bar ago, one day ago, and then we semicolon and end. So now now we define gap, but as you can see, we can't. I can't hit apply and I can't hit OK because nothing's posted out. There's nothing on the screen for it to uh, tell us. So we go back to plot. Let's plot the gap. Plot gap, or no, plot x equals gap, semicolon. So now it's going to post out the gap calculation, which is uh, that one we did earlier. If I change this to Thor hammer, it's going to post out the average volume. So I hope hope that makes sense. I don't. I can't really think of a better way to explain it. Um, So now what we want to do is take, we, we need to turn the average volume into a ratio from the current volume of the day. So let's, let's change uh, define gap to volume. So we're creating a new variable of volume and all, all we want it to be is the volume of the day. So you just type in volume. Now this is uh the volume of the current bar. Since we've set it to day, it's going to calculate the day's volume. If you use a different time frame, that will this will change, and you'll you'll have to designate it uh, by the time frame that you want. But everything we're going to be doing today is just going to be in, in the day format, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and let's change. We'll leave it a store hammer, I guess. So now, if we want to create a ratio of the daily volume. Let's let's do a quick math uh, calculation. Let's say the average volume for a stock is 2 million uh, and we'll just we'll just do 200 uh, to keep the math simple. Let's say though that it trades uh, 5 million shares in the day, which will be 500. Uh, if you take the average volume divided by the uh, today's volume, you'll get a ratio. No, wait, actually, it's wrong. You take the daily, the day's volume divided by the 30-day the average, which is 200, and you get 2.5. So this is a percentage. The, the stock has traded 2.5 times its average volume for the day, and that's all we have to do to post out this calculation. So we take the traded volume, which is vol, divided by Thor Hammer. We apply, we now get the ratio, 64.4 to 64.2. But again, we're getting some of these, you know, two-digit two digit decimals, and we don't really care about that. Uh, we want to get rid of it. So we're going to do a round function. Uh, we'll put this in parentheses real quick, and we'll do our comma. So there's our comma, and then you type in the round. So it's red because we haven't designated what what decimal place we want it to round to. As soon as you type in one after the comma, hit apply, it now rounds. So it's reading exactly the same way uh, this code is. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing. We now need to color code uh, all of this code. And I'm gonna cheat real quick and look at my old code because it is a, a little bit confusing. So this, this is the assigned color code that we used earlier to uh, do the gap scanner. But now it's a bit more complicated. We have we have some between statements here and then we have multiple if statements. So I'll read it through and it'll try to we'll try to make sense of it and then we'll we'll create it in the other uh, folder or in the other quote. So assign color if x is above 0.65, then run this code. 
So the, if it's 65, then we start calculating this. So then it's another, it's another if, it's an if statement inside of an if statement. X, if X is between 35 and 65, then again, we have another if statement. If X is between 35 and 65, then color yellow or light orange. So if it's between 35 and 65, light orange, else color yellow. So the, let me hit OK. And honestly, the easiest way to debug this is to just look at the uh, screen. So we scroll down. Um, we actually don't even have any yellow because yellow is, I think, I think that's a uh, wasted function, actually. I don't, I don't think I need uh, one of those if statements, but we'll, we'll rebuild it. Um, so if it's between 65 and uh, 60, then it runs this code. If it's not, it goes to else. If it's between 15 to 35, color pink, else red. Now, if that doesn't work, then it goes all the way back to the first then statement, else if between 65 and 2, then between 65 and 1, color light green, else green. And it's confusing. It's confusing. I know. <laughs> so let's just recreate it. So we'll go back to our class. So we want to define X as a color. Uh, assign. Assign color parentheses, and then to to keep the formatting clean, I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to put the end parentheses and colon. So assign color. If let's keep it simple for now. If we're going to do a between statement. If between if x is between. Uh, let's do 0.5 and 0.1 or uh, 1. Then color green. Else color red. Now, between statements have to have their own parentheses. When, when you do a between calculation, it has to be in its own parentheses. So this, this right here is its own little, little calculation in its own. X between uh, 1.5 and 1, then color green, color red. Now, if we hit apply, we, it is now color coded. And if we scroll down. Well, actually, all of them are between above 50. So, oh, okay. So anything above X is red. So that's not what we want. We go back to custom volume class. If X is between, try to run else. So what we could do is we can set our max range for our calculation. Let's say we want everything between one. We want, we want everything between one and 2.5 to be green. And then we want other colors for numbers above that. So we can set this to 500. So that's our max, whatever. Hit apply. So now everything between one and one and 500 is green. But we don't want everything in one and 500 to be green. We want, you know, 2.5 and up to be, uh, well, what was it? Let's scroll up. What were my colors? So 2.5 to 10 is uh, light blue, and then above 10 is purple. So that's what we want to build. So we go back to the calculation, zoom down. All right, so if X is between 1.5 and 500, then green. So what we're going to write is a if statement for this, this then statement. 
So let me enter here, then. So instead of doing color green, we're going to go then if x is between 1 and 2.5, green, else, and then we'll do another if statement, if that makes sense. So then parentheses. So we have to do another parentheses to designate this then statement. Then uh, if, and then we have to do another parentheses for the between statement, just like earlier. So if parentheses between. So another parentheses between. If x is between 1 and 2.5, then green, or color green. Okay, now it's still red syntax because we have not told it the else statement yet for this if stuff, if function. So we're going to enter, and I'm going to I'm going to enter this just to clean up the syntax. Then if between us, and we I'll actually clean it this way. So else color. Uh, let's do cyan just just to see what it posts out as. Okay, so we're still getting an error. So we need to figure out we're missing a parenthesis somewhere, and it's the it's the between statement. The x that we don't have a finish uh, parenthesis on the between statement. Okay, and then we're still getting an error. Let me delete that one. There we go. So that was an incorrect syntax. So now it's fixed. So apply. So now everything between 1 and 2.5 is green, else it's cyan. However, we don't want everything to be cyan. We just want uh, 2.5 to 10 to be cyan, so we need to do another if statement. So we're going to delete the else, or delete this color, else if, in the parentheses, we're doing a between statement, x between 2.5 and 10 in parentheses, because we're, we don't, I don't want to forget the parentheses again. So we got another if statement, then color cyan. Else color uh, violet, I think is what the purple is. Violet. Now we're, we're getting a syntax error. I think it's because we need parentheses. Yeah. So let me move this else in yeah so hopefully that it kind of makes a little you're able to read it a little bit better now that it's organized uh, if we hit apply now everything between 2.5 and 10 is cyan and everything above that is purple <clears throat> so let's reread it real quick so x between 1 and 500 then if between 1 and 2.5, color green, else if between 2.5, color cyan, and then everything else is violet. So we've basically divided the calculation in half. We've, we've done the positive numbers from 1 to 500, uh, <clears throat> but now we need to do the red colors. So if we hit OK, come down to here. We scroll down, you know, everything below one is just red, and we don't want that. We want to, it to go from light green to orange to light red to red. Uh, yeah, you can do, I, Joe, you can do uh, greater than and less than statements as well, and that's originally what I did, but that's way more complicated. Uh, than using the between statements. The between statements make it way easier for uh, color coding. Uh, I just, I when I started, and I, I only started learning all this two days ago. So everything I'm showing you right now, I didn't know two days ago. So if you feel like this is intimidating or complicated, um, don't let it intimidate you because it, it is very simple to uh, get into and learn. You just spend, if you spend 10 hours messing with it and doing everything that I just showed you, 
you'll have a pretty good uh, basic foundation to start messing with stuff. Okay. So now we need to do the uh, red or the, the red colors. So we're going to delete this parenthesis, bring it back. Whoops, didn't mean to delete that one. So this parenthesis again, that little uh, cover over here, this is all this calculation right here. So that parenthesis comes to that parenthesis. So if we come back here, if between 1 and 1.5, then all of this runs. If it's not between 1 and 1.5, then all of this is skipped. So it's, it's going to go down to the red, to this else. So everything below 1 is down here. So now we're going to start coding the, uh, the red colors. So we're going to delete the red because we don't want red. And then else, uh, we'll do uh, else parentheses if, and then another, another parentheses for the between statement, between, or wait, x between, x, x between, uh, let's do 75%. So between 0.75, wait, actually, do we want to reverse this? If between 7.5 and 1, then color else. Yeah, so we can between 0.75 and 1. If between 7.5 and 1, enter. Then color to uh, light green. So it hasn't quite hit 1% or 1 to 1 ratio. Then light green, else. We'll, we'll just do a color real quick to uh, see what it looks like. Color, uh, light orange, in parentheses. Hit apply. Now everything is colored from 1 to 7.5 is. Uh, green or light green and then everything below that is uh, orange so if we go back to but we want we need we need to look at stocks that weren't heavily traded today but since it's we're not going to be able to see the other colors because it's aftermarket hours and nothing's trading but in the morning these all these colors will be uh, different so we need to code wait I'm not average volume. Um, we need to code below uh, 7.5. So instead of going orange, we need to do uh, more if statements. So else if an x another between statement between let's do 0.5 and 7.5. Then color light orange. <sighs> Else color pink. So pink is uh, pink is like the li the lightest red you can get. Hit apply. So we can't see it, but it'll be down there. Uh, this this is pink right here. This really light red color. Um, it's a nice transition from red to orange. I think there's another there's a lighter orange, but I can't remember what it is. Okay, so now everything below 0.5 is going to be pink, but we want we'll do a light red and a red. So below Point one will be red between we'll do from from a quarter to a half is going to be pink from a quarter to ten is going to be light red and then for, from uh, below point one is going to be red like dark red so we got three colors to code uh,
else. Okay, so I'm going to do another if statement. If x between uh, so we want to do the light. We want to do the pink first. So 0.25 and 0.5. Then color pink, else, else, uh, we're doing another else statement with an if, it's the exact same code every single time, x, between uh, 0.1 and 0.25. Then this this is the final colors. Then color uh, light light red. Else color red so that'll be a dark red now we're, we're getting syntax errors so we're, we're missing parentheses i'm pretty sure i got everything right if i just put a parenthesis here no we're still missing a few so missing if executed we'll just keep adding parentheses to see fix okay so we're missing two parentheses Let's see if we can clean this up a bit. Just to kind of separate everything. Now oh, that doesn't really make it easier. It gets kind of confusing, obviously. Uh, but once you see it and build it and understand it, it it's much easier. So we hit apply. Now, when the market opens, um, Everything between below one or point one should be red, and then it goes to light green or light red, and then pink, and then orange, and then uh, light green, and then finally green once it hits one to one, uh, and then above two point five is blue, and then everything above that is purple. So that's how you do uh, multicolor coding using between statements. Uh, and I'm gonna be real back real quick. In the restroom. All right. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom in anymore. Uh, is there any questions so far? Uh, anybody that's in the voice chat, feel free to ask questions. Maybe I can do it this way. That's that's about as good as I can get it without cutting out my uh, charts. Okay, so that's how you do the color coding. Um, let's build something a little more advanced now. Let's do, what do we wanna do? The last, the range, the range position. 
let's build, I'll show you how I built the uh, color code uh, indicator for red to green moves. We'll, we'll, I'll show you that. This, this will be a quick, a good intro into the scanners that we'll do later. Um, dollar change from open. Dollar change from open. So <clears throat> this, I'm just going to copy this real quick. And actually, I like the code on this volume average better than my original volume average. So I'm going to use that instead. That's going to be my new volume average. Uh, bring that down. And we're going to now build this percent change from open calculator. Percent change. Oh, so percent change from open. And we're going to copy that or paste that old, the other code that I used. We hit apply. We now have the exact same uh, codes here or quotes. But I'm going to show you how to get how to make the colors flash for red to green moves and when they're hitting red to green moves. Let's edit this. We're going to um, if close it between open and open between. Okay, so we're doing the assigned color again, but this is assigned background. So it's one. It's the function is just a little different. Instead of coloring the uh, number itself, we're coloring the background. So assign background color. And if you go to here, assign, assign background color, you get the same syntax, just add color. So <sighs> we're going to be doing an if statement. And what we want to, what we want to do is First, we need to know, did the stock make a red move? Yeah, the first thing we need to know is, did the, did the stock make a red move? And the way we do that is you can calculate it on, uh, you can either use the low of the day, but we don't necessarily want to, uh, let me re-look at my code. Actually, I'm going to uh, I'm just going to redact this code. If you use pounds numbers or pound symbols, it will uh, it will basically uh, tells the code to not look at this line, so it's not calculating anything more. It's basically like making it inert. So now I can keep the code down here that I originally used, and we can recreate it up here. So close between open and close between open and close low and color dark orange. So yeah, so this is the close greater than open. And okay. So the first thing we need to do is we we don't want stocks that maybe just move like a few cents red and then go green. We want something that's actually went red a little bit. Like it's it's moved at least some amount in the red uh, because some stocks will you know they might have an opening opening bar that's uh, it goes red for a split second and then it goes green that's that's not really a red to green move what we're what we want to see is a stock that continually moves red a, at least a bit amount on the price and then it curves back up like a cup and handle and goes green so that's the, that's the type of pattern we're looking for so if so define open change plot x now luke this is advanced uh stuff you don't have to build your own scanners and stuff you can there's plenty of people that trade without doing any of this stuff this is just a course that i'm or a class that i'm running for a Discord server. So if um, 
that's screw it. So the first thing we're gonna do is if the close is greater than the open, then color uh, let's just do green. No, not dark green. Green. Else color current. Now current means it's just the default color. It's the it's whatever the color currently is. Um, and then we'll end it with another parentheses and a uh, colon. One parentheses. If the close is green in the open, then color green. Else color current. What's wrong with my code? Oh, I don't need that parentheses there. Okay. All right, so if we hit apply, now everything's everything's green, and it's not the it's not the green that I want. Actually, I need dark green. There. So everything's green. That's that's not what we want. Hit OK. Everything above zero is green. So why? How do we fix this? Well, we need it to tell. We need to tell it to only look for stocks that have moved red some amount. The way you do that is with another calculation. Um, if closes is green, now this is a new statement. Or this is a new function we haven't used. This is the and statement. So if it's closed green, then color red, else color green, or color current. If close is greater than the open, so the open is the open has been made, the price is currently above the open. And if the open the open times this is the code that I'm going for if the open times 0.97 so we're looking we're looking for the open to go down at least 3% if that makes sense so we t we're taking the open price times and reducing it by 3%, the open is greater than the low. So this calculation is basically, is the low at least 3% below the open? So now it's much cleaner. Now we're getting only a few uh, green marks. Hit OK. Let's let's look at some of these charts. So let's look at one that did not make a red to green move. We do we do have a spike here. Like I said, some some stocks will spike for the first few minutes and then rip up. That's not what we want. We want something that's moved considerably down and then came back up and at, at least three percent. So let's let's look at Rata, which is has been designated red. This is a red to green move. It's moved at least three percent down, came back up broke the open and, cl and the close is above the uh, current open and it, it closed over here so this is a red to green move let's look at xxlr this is a bit this is not entirely a red to green move i wouldn't consider this a red to green move um, but th the code isn't perfect I'm, I'm trying to figure out how i can reference the first 15 minutes of the trading uh, market and you know, doing some kind of bar calculation to uh, make this code better, but for now it works pretty decently. Uh, AVEO, that's not a, that's not one. Uh, there hasn't been too many red to green moves. Let's see. Let's go to a different watch list. Um, top ten gainers in Nasdaq. So a lot of these went to red to green. Now. Uh, let's do heavy volume. All these. That's a bit of a red to green move. It's pretty choppy, but. That's a red to green move. So it's not entirely 100% foolproof, but it's better than uh, nothing. Let's go back to uh, let's go to the S&P 100. See if there's any. 
Oh, red greens there. Uh, we'll just go back to gap ups. Okay, so my code is not exactly entirely accurate with that one. Let's reduce this a bit. We're gonna do 2% instead of 1% or 3%. So go back to the code. We'll do 8% apply. So now everything's accurate. However, uh, now we want to we want to we want to create a indicator that flashes or that turns orange when the stock is making a red to green move. So it's gone red, and now it's coming back up towards the open. When it gets to the open, we want it to go orange, and then once it's above the 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 open, it'll stay green. So you can use this uh, quote as uh, pre-market and intraday trading as an indicator or you can it will stay green for post-market analysis or doing your homework uh, like we're, we're doing right now so if it closes right in the open then color dark green else so we're going to delete this current and we're going to do exactly what we did earlier with the uh, with the other statement else If if close is if the close close between open times point nine nine and open times point one oh two in parentheses and we'll do the colors real quick then color light orange else color current in parentheses okay so this code so let's reread it if the close is greater than the open times and uh, the open times point eight is lower than the uh, or greater than the low turn green so anything that's above the anything that's above the uh, the open is going to be green if it's made a red to green move However, else, if the close is between the open times 99, uh, this is basically uh, open 1% or below 1% and open above 2%, it's a range. It's, it's a 3% range between the open uh, close. If, if the price is between that, turn orange. Uh, else, it just goes to current now uh, and actually I think we need to add one more thing to this it, it also needs to check for the red to green move which is uh, open red to green or the open so we need to add this code right here to the uh, and open is greater than the low Right, oh, if the close. Okay, so this is this is the between statement. I forgot we have the between statement here, and outside of that, open times low. So now it's gonna it's this should flash orange when a stock has done the red to green move, and 
uh, is between that open uh, range. How do you make a new item for watch list? What do you mean by new item? Okay, so uh, let's say we wanted to clean up this code real quick. Let's say uh, we wanted to use this calculation, but we don't want to type this everything. So we're, we're copying calculations, and that's not something we want to do. We could do we could clean this code up and do some defined statements. Um, so let's do we need to do a true statement. Um, Define, define uh, red, red to green equals do an if statement, if open and very low, then true, else, false, and then colon. Uh, if maybe it's input actually. Nope. Never done a. I have not done a uh, true false statement. Then one else. <sighs> okay. So what we've done is I've, I've copied this code and basically turned it into a variable. And the variable is either a one or a zero. So if open, if this is true, it'll be a one. If it's false, it'll be a zero. So we can delete this now. And all we have to type is and red to, red to green equals one. So it, Uh, equal, when you're writing equals, you have to do two equal uh, symbols for some reason. It's, it's just the syntax of the code. Um, it's basically checking, does red equal uh, one? When you use one bracket, you're just, you're telling it that it does equal this. So this, this mean this is telling it that it's some, equal to something. This is checking to see if it's equal to something. And then we can delete this one too. Uh, red to green equals one. So this basically just cleans up your code a little bit uh, better. Now we could we could go even farther um, and we could create the uh, orange range in a defined statement. So define uh, define we'll call it flip. So We'll copy close between open and close. So if, we'll do another if statement. If closes between open and hello, then one else zero. So exact exact same if statement, but it's a it's the flip. We can clean this up by deleting this. If if flip equals uh, one and red green equals one so this way uh, this is a bit excessive for this simple code but you can this is how you can use defined statements uh, or defining variables to clean up your code to make it simpler to read uh, so it's a bit more a less less complicated uh, this is excessive for a you know tw 20 line code but if you're writing something that's pretty heavy uh, that's a easy little way to clean stuff up. I meant uh, like a new column entry, but I found it just goes through studies and create a new study and just apply it to the watch list. Um, cool. Well, what right now what I'm doing is building custom columns on my watch lists. Uh, in the beginning of the video, I explained all of the columns. So if, if you watch the video, uh, or from the start. Basically, I explain what all these custom columns do, and then we're rebuilding them right now. 
Um, so uh, that's how you do a custom column statement. Now let's let's get into the heavier stuff. Uh, last, last. Let's add. Let's re-add our last statement. Um, get rid of that one. Last. Dollar range. And range position. So coming back to here. So <clears throat> we're up we're back to the original columns that I had. We got the volume. Okay. So for those that are just now watching, I'll explain these columns real quick. This is the last price of the stock, but it's color coded to uh, give you an indication of the um, what it is. So, as price as stocks get lower in price, they become uh, brighter in colors because you want a stock that you want a stock that's low priced and moving a lot because it's, it'll be it'll give you the most potential for, for, for profit. Uh, and then the next column is the dollar range. This is how much the stock has moved in a dollar amount. From the open, or, or this is a calculation of the low and the high of the uh, total price action of the day. So this stock has moved ten dollars just today. This one's moved three dollars. This one's moved one dollars. These have moved fifty cents, and then down here they've moved like ten cents. And they're color coded so that you can find the stocks that move the most, so that you can make the most profit and the most potential uh, profit. And then the last one. This is where the current price is at based on that range. So uh, 90, 99, this is a percentage. So 99%, the stock is at the, it's making new highs and it's, it's color coded so that when the stock is making those highs, it will flip, uh, the background color will flip bright pink or bright, uh, yeah, magenta, I think is what it's called. And then it's dark when it's uh, within 10%, so it's getting ready to make new highs. And then you have the other colors for the different percentages. And what we're gonna do, and then when it's making, when it's getting ready to make new lows, the color, the box will turn red. And when it's a, when it's making new lows within 2%, it will uh, turn uh, bright red. Uh, Zen, if you're still watching, can you scroll up and copy that Discord link and repo repost it for him? Thank you. Uh, okay, so we've already colored. We've already covered how to do color coding and all that. Uh, I'll show you real quick the code for the dollar range. Real simple. Uh, this is the. That's all the color coding. We don't have to worry about that. To calculate the range, the total range that the price has moved today, all you do is take the high and the low, high minus the low. That's it. That gives you the dollar range for the day. Super. That's the simplest code in the world. Uh, and then we have a round function that rounds it uh, to the second decimal place. And actually, I can change that to one. It's a half. No. So that's a dollar range, and then we have the, the color statements down here, and that's it. The last one is literally just the close plotted and then assign colors. That's it. The range position, this is a little bit different. Um, so the first thing I did was define the range just like the other one, high minus the low. So that's the price low, that's the price. And then I define the current position, which is the close minus the low. So uh, let's, let me plot this real quick and I'll show you basically, I'll, I'll show you the, the export or what the defined positions do. So let's plot range real quick. Hit apply. 
you'll see these numbers are the exact same as this column. So 10.5 if we they, they're all the exact same. So that's what that define statement does. The range is the same thing. And then position. Position is basically reducing the current number to uh, it's the close minus the low, which you then take both those numbers and divide them, and they it gives you uh, the percent ratio that they are. So delete this, back to this. So now, if you look at this, the position, the current position of the stock divided by the range. Apply, and it's back to the original. And we can... I can do a quick thanks then um, yeah so that's just that calculation and then we got the colors and then the background colors so let's let's build we'll actually we'll edit this one and we'll make it a little more advanced today um, Actually, we'll come back to this. We'll come back to this code, and I'll we'll we'll create colors to flash when the stock is getting near a fifty a fifty percent fib. So when it's around the fifty percent range, it'll start the background color will change. That'll be a good signal to uh, either enter into a trade to go long or sell a trade if you're already shorting it. Um, the fifty fib bounces and the sixty one fib bounces are very popular. But we'll we'll come back to that. Let's let's now let's build a scanner so, because we've been covering quotes for the past like hour and a half, two hours almost. So let's let me throw this scanner up that I built, and we'll look at the charts that it pulls up. So we'll sort by traded volume. Okay, so let's run through the parameters real quick. We want at least stocks with 20 million shares or higher. The average volume of the past 30 days is at least 200,000. We want stocks that have been regularly traded at least a little bit uh, for this scan. We don't want you know, dead float stocks, uh, with, unless you're a low float trader or a penny stock trader, uh, then you can build your own scans for the, that specific type. But the actual code is uh, here. So this is the custom code. And the way you build your own custom codes, you just add study filter. Uh, can you guys see that? Yeah, custom. And then you get the custom, you go over to think, and you can just write your own code. But we don't want that one. Let me, let me move my bars chat up. Okay, so custom, custom code. So this is the calculation. So what we're doing, the close of yesterday is greater than $7, and the close of yesterday is less than $100. This The scan looks for uh, stocks between $7 and $100, because I don't have enough capital to trade above $100. If you do, then you just change this number to, 100, or to $200 or whatever. Or if you want to trade lower float stocks, um, you change this to one dollar to ten dollars. It doesn't matter now And this is an and statement. So when you use and statements all of these parameters have to be met before the scan will Show something so every every Section that you put that is uh, between the and It has to be true or the scan will not show anything um, so this is a good way using and statements is a good way to make sure that you build really precise scanners that meet specific criteria before anything happens. Um, so between seven and $10 and the, cur the, the, the day's high is greater than the open plus 25% or 25 cents. Now you can change this. When, when you say high, it means that the stock 
could spike up at least 25 cents and it will trigger, but the close can come back down. So this scan, when you, when you use high on this scan, the stocks will stay here on the chart. So one, once this criteria is hit, it will, uh, it will stay on this uh, watch list for the rest of the day. However, if I change this to close, this, this changes the entire code. Let's say the stock spikes up 25% and the scan goes off, but then it goes red and it goes below the 25 cents of the open. It will be removed from the scan. So you can, when you build, when you build scanners, think about this because you can build scanners to proc a ticker and then keep the ticker there for the rest of the day so you can keep track of it. Or maybe you want a scanner that only shows uh, stocks meeting a certain criteria. So when, when you're building them, think about that because the, the way you write it can have a big influence on uh, how the scanner behaves. So why, why would you use close instead of high? Um, let's go back to the high example. If the stock, let's say you're a long trader and you want a stock that's moving. You, you want to find a stock that's made a, a bull flag pattern. Um, it needs to move at least 25 cents and then it'll proc and it makes a high, but then it comes back down. You want to buy it when it's coming back down. Um, and you could add, you could even make the scan more complicated. Like, uh, let's say you wanted to enter into the stock when it's coming down to the, to the 61 fib, you could do, and, uh, flows between How would you do that? High high plus low divided by two. Yeah. You it'd be easier if you did a define statement, but you can build a scanner to proc on fibs as well. And I think let's that'll be a good video. Let's try to figure that out. Um Uh, Joe is uh, close of yesterday one is yesterday's close and close is today's closing price. Yes, Joe, that is correct. So when you use close, so this is close of yesterday. Whenever you have a number in brackets after a close, a high or a low, it's it's looking at one bar. It's not it's not the day. It's the bar. the The way you know what time frame you're using is up here, the aggregate period. If I change this to one minute. And you can include, uh, you can even do scans for uh, uh, pre-market hours. So this this is now looking at one minute. So this means the close of one bar ago on the minute chart is greater than seven. Uh, the the high of one minute, uh, the high of the current one minute bar is greater than the open of. Uh, plus 25 cents and this is the this is the open of the one minute bar so you've now totally changed the scanner so this is only going to pop stocks that are have moved 25 cents in one minute which doesn't happen a whole lot or at least it's not what you probably want to do so that's how the days in the brackets work okay so If you're a long trader and you want to trade something that is uh, moving up in a bull flag pattern, you at least want it to move 25 cents. It's it's made a high, but let's say it's came back down. Well, it doesn't matter. As long as the high is above 25 cents, it will stay on this scanner for the rest of the day. Um, but you could make it more complicated to say, uh, let's try to do, let's try to build fib into it. So let's define define. 50 fib. 
equals. So this is going to be a calculation of the high and the low of the day. High minus low High minus low uh, Oh wait, can I not def I can't define on scan. So this is the syntax thing. I don't think you can define on uh, scanners input maybe. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask on the thing script uh, uh, help real quick. Oh, there's no moderators in. Uh, the tutorial room, so I guess I can't ask. Um, okay, so well, let's just continue. So, between seven and ten dollars, high is at least moved uh, twenty-five cents for the day, and the open is greater than the close of one day times one point oh two. This right here is basically two percent. This is a two percent gap up, so it's saying. The open is at least has at least gapped up uh, two percent from the close of yesterday, and the open is greater than or is less than the close of one day ago times fifteen percent. So this is basically a range. It's looking for the stock between that is gapped between two and fifteen percent because you want it to. You don't want a stock that's gapped up a tremendous amount because you could uh, it could be too much and it could go red. Um, so 15% is usually a good um, little indicator for that. Let's uh, let's try to build the fib scanner though. No, we'll leave the we'll leave the scan simple, and we'll use our quotes to do the fib to indicate when the fibs because uh, you want your scans to be you, you want your scans to catch a ticker and then just watch it for the play because um, you don't want scans popping or you don't want tickers popping in and out of your scans constantly because it can get confusing or you might lose one so this this is a good scan to just keep track of a stock once it's once it's met the criteria um, but now what we're gonna do is build a indicator to tell us when a stock is hitting a 50 fib and we'll go back to the range indicator so the one we're going to be editing is this one right here the where it tells you uh, the current price on the uh, the day's range so this right here is 52 CELG it finished right at the 52 fib we well, we drew this fib earlier it's it closed like right here so we want this to give us an indicator when the stock is really close to the 50 fib um, of the day. Now, on the flip side, let's let's pretend it was pre-market. And I'm going to turn. You guys can't see my two-minute chart, so we're going to do two-minute. Okay. Let's say it was pre-market and we wanted to trade the first bull flag so this our our daily range would be this high right here and this low so this is the new fib uh, if we were trading in the pre in the first 20 minutes of the of the trading session so it pops and it co and it comes back down to the 61 fib so it didn't uh, Bull flags typically don't come down to the 50 fib. They can, but you'd like to see them hold at the 61 fibs. Um, so we will create we'll create an alert from 61 percent 
to 70% to indicate that it's uh, coming down to the fib and then we'll create one for the 50 fib. Okay. Range indicator. We're working with the background colors, so let's take a look at the code. If X is greater than 50, then if X is greater than uh, let's clean up this code a little bit. Okay, so if x is greater than 50, we'll actually just redo this. I don't like this code. If x between 90, and 100, then uh, I think we did um, and uh, else. In bracket, colon, and parentheses. Okay. So if it's between 90 and 100, plum, hit OK. None of them are actually between 100, so let's go back to gap up. Filter. There we go. So 90 and 100 is plum. So this is indicating the stocks are about to make new highs or are making new highs. But we want a little more advanced than that. We want it to be bright pink if it's within 2% of 100, if it's at 2% of the high. Um, so when it's making new highs, we want it to be a different color. So we need to do another if statement. Or, a, yeah. Then if x between 98 and 100, then color pink, else plum. Now, okay, I don't like the pink color. Uh, color. Here, what color I used? Lime, magenta. I think it was magenta. Oh wait, no, this is magenta. No. This one's plum. There you go. So that's uh, that's the indicator for uh, making new highs. Now we want to build one for So we're going to go to the else statement, 
I'll delete the current color current. Um, so else. If x between 60, 60 and 70 and color, what color should we use for the 60 fib. Let's use dark gray for now. Else color current. Syntax is wrong. The effects between the color and color. Wrong. Oh, I didn't. I didn't put the and sixty and seventy. Apply. So now, this is the. Uh, indicator for the uh, 61 fit bounce but we mm, let's say we want it a little more advanced we want it to be uh, when it gets like right at the 61 fib we want it to turn uh, light gray so we'll do another we'll take this then statement and create another if statement for it if x if x between sixty and sixty four then color white gray else color dark gray. In parentheses. And there's a dark gray. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Okay. I don't like the light gray, so let's just try gray. There we go. Any questions so far? You guys following along fine? All right. So there is the uh, 60 fib indicator. Now let's build the 50 fib. So we're gonna kind of separate this now. Yeah, let's let's keep it organized. So if between 90 and 90, then this else. Yes, yeah, so this video will be live. Uh, it'll be. It'll probably end up being a pretty popular video, I'm hoping, because there's no good videos out there on the internet for thinkorswim scripting. Um, I might re I might make a quick condensed video similar to how I how I learned day trade in a week. Okay, so the next one is else. Joe, are you on a paper account? If you're on a paper account, you cannot do custom filters. Uh, you have to do it on live accounts. Right. However, you can open 
if you want a paper trade, you can open two instances of Thinkorswim. So you can use your live uh, custom studies, which is what I have to do when I'm paper trading. I don't know why Thinkorswim won't let you use your uh, custom studies on paper accounts. It's really annoying. Okay, else. If x between 50, no, to 48 and 60. Then I don't really have enough colors for this. I know there's a way to make custom colors, and I might have to do that. Try pink. I don't like pink. Um, there is a way to do custom colors. Find a name of a color. Create color. Uh, Let's do, do, I want gold. Two six, two two one, seventy. We'll do two twenty five on each and then seventy seven or seventy five. Uh okay, so create color, double red, double red. Then get color two five two two five seven five. Does that work? Cool. So that's how you can create custom colors. Um, I don't like that color. It's not. It's too dark. Too bright. Uh, One thirty five. 50. 50. There we go. That's better. That's even better. Okay. Now let's see if we can define, define dark gold. Fifty. That's what. I, okay, so we can't define. Is there a way to define the color? Define global color.
Find the name of a color for a plot with a define. create color. Okay, so I just got to define global color. So instead of this, find, find global color. Bring name, color name. Okay. Delete the equal. Dark gold. No, not dark cloud. Old parentheses. All right, find a little string name. Oh, I've got a so this is what's called a sh it's called a string. Strings are basically uh they're not variables. They're not values. They're they're a text format. Um, this is like a this is a syntax kind of parameter thing when it comes to coding. When you when you define a variable like how I did up here, this is actually a variable. It's a number. It's it's digits that you can use to calculate things with. A string is not that. A string is text. It can't be used to calculate things. It's just it's just letters. It's just words. Um, you you use them to uh, plot different things. Like <laughs> if I wanted to plot <laughs> instead of plotting this calculation, if I n number pad this and delete it, I could I could plot a string. I could just say hi. Actually, no. You you can't plot str strings. You can only uh, I could. Uh, let me add out this. So add label. This is a different I won't explain what add label is, but basically it just posts out strings. Hi. Uh, I can't I can't remember how to do it, but yeah, strings are just texts. Um, so now that I've created this color, I don't have to I don't have to do this. I can just do um, color dark. How do I call that color though? Is it just dark gold? No. Plot signal, highest lows, plot name, fault color, global color. Oh, you gotta type in global color. Okay. Then global color. There. So now What? Why the global color dark gold? Why is it white? That's weird. Well, I'll figure it out some other time. I'm not gonna waste time on the stream. Uh, we'll just we'll just copy this. We'll just create. We'll have to copy and create colors for each one. So that's gold. Um, between sixty-eight and fifty. Else. Uh, 
I want that to be a little bit darker. One twenty by twenty. That's good. Okay. <clears throat> And we're gonna do a, we're gonna separate this. So if it's between 48 and 60, then we'll do another if statement if if x between forty-eight and fifty-two. No. 52 and 60, then else we'll do another create color with a brighter gold. There, so uh, let's do that a little bit brighter. There, so if a stock is uh, between 50 and 48, it'll be dark gold, but when it's within 4% of 50, it'll be a brighter gold. And actually, I want that a bit brighter. But now we can't we can't really see the letters or the wording, so we'll need to change that in a minute. I don't think you need any money in your live account, Zen, to uh, be live. Okay, so now we've got our 61 fib and our uh, 50 fib. Last thing to do is the uh, high and lows. I think I'm going to change this to. 95. Only 95s are proc. All right, so, all right, last one, red. Else is, if, if x, zero and 10, then, Else color roll down. Everything is dark red or dark red, but we want it to be light red, or we want it to be, let's do pink actually. Let's do, instead of dark red, pink. No. We'll stay with dark red. However, we, anything is not meeting this criteria, we, we want to be current, but we want to split up the zero to 10 into two colors, just so we can check for making new highs or making new lows. So we're gonna do another if statement here for the for the reds. Uh, if x between zero and two, then 
color red. Else, color dark red in parentheses. Why? There we go. Now it will. Uh, let's see if we can proc this even. Let's see what bright red looks like. About the same, but I like it. I'm actually going to change this to say seven percent. We'll do this ninety three percent. Okay, so if when prices are within seven percent, they'll turn, and then with it when they're making. Uh, when they're in two to two to zero percent, they're making new lows. They'll be bright red. Um, and then we've got the 50 fib indicators, the gold, and the uh, uh, 61 fib gray and dark gray. And then we've got the plum for uh, making new highs. However, see we're getting some of these colors are off. So we want these to be green. And we also can't really read the 50 fib. And we're also green down here on the uh, 10. So that's because I had the color code in the numbers different. So if up above else, if x is between 50 and 70, so 10 is between 10 and 20. We need to change this 10 to a 7, 7.1. There we go. That's fixed. And then this 90 needs to be 93. Okay. Okay. Up. Well, there we go. So that's fixed. Now we just need to change the color between the 50s. Let's find the 50 code between 50 and 70. Color is light green. Else, if it's between 70, okay, so this is, this right here is uh, 50 to 75. We need to change that. Actually, because I dropped the 50 down, down to 48%, so we need to, uh, do 52, because 52 looks fine right there. Why? Let's change this to 52. That to 52. Okay, so now all this is orange. So now this is orange. If X is between 30 and 52, color light orange, which is this right here. So this is our this is the code that we need to edit. We're gonna enter. If x between 30 and 48, then color orange. Else color, just do uh, current, see what it looks like. Doesn't look like 48 is flipping, so we need to change that to 47.9. White does not look good. What's the opposite of gold? Purple. Okay, so we'll do plum. There we go. Oh, let's just make it black. All right. 
Now that is done. So that's pretty much it. So we've now built all of the uh, scanners. I've showed you how a lot of them work. Um, once I get them tested live and uh, flushed out, I will be releasing them on the Discord server. So let me fly it over the Discord server. I they will be released only on the Discord server, so they'll probably be, be under my uh, Garen's trading, which I haven't filled out or anything yet. I'm still working on getting all of the other uh, structure built and all that. Um, it'll also, I'll just keep them in the my Garen's trading. They probably won't be down in the uh, uh, Think Script channel here because that'll just be like various channels. These will be the specific, I'll have a, uh, actually I'll just make it right now. Uh, these, this will be all of my custom thing scripts that I use and I'll also be, um, I can also save out and give you guys my entire template set up on my charts. So let me pull this back a little bit. So I can also, I just realized I can share my entire chart setups and I can even, I think I can even share workspace. So yeah, I can export like my entire setup for thinkorswim and upload it to the discord for you guys to use if you want it so i'll be doing that as well but after i get them all flushed out i'll be releasing all of these codes and think scripts and you can go through them and edit them or change them or do whatever you want with them uh, but hopefully this was a helpful video for you guys to learn the basics of think script um, i would like to start building the discord channel to the point where uh, we have a few people that are scripting in it and understand scripting and can help newbies out with making better scripts and more complicated scripts. We can get into uh, eventually building custom studies and stuff like that and pretty advanced things, but that's down the road. But it all starts somewhere. You have to have a basic understanding to uh, get going. So if you guys have any questions, uh, ask them and I'll answer them real quick. Uh, but then I have not eaten since I woke up. I literally sat down and started working, so I need to go eat. Uh, can you uh, post that link on Discord? Yeah, the video will be on uh, Discord as well, Chaz. It will be live on my YouTube channel as well. I'm planning on it being a pretty popular video. I even set my quality on my live stream to be higher so it would uh, post out as a good quality on my YouTube channel. All right, I'm not seeing any questions. Let me go through the live chat and see. This is a very different guy's music. Uh, Zen might have left, so I'm gonna, I'll I'll send you the repost the link. That's the Discord. Diego, to the to have the one yes because it needs to be true. It's a true or false statement uh, in digits.
Uh, all right, I'm not seeing any questions in the Discord. If you guys do have any questions or you think of anything or you have any issues, uh, you can ask them in the uh, just ask them in the resource pit. Any questions you guys have for that uh, don't clutter up the ThinkScript channel uh, with questions. I just I just want the resource channels um, to have resources, not really discussion. All of the discussion of resources. Resources should be uh, in the resource pit or, um, yeah, just the resource pit. So all discussion should be in there. All right. Hope you guys have a good day. I'm going to go eat.